Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we're back to another recording of Hearthstone. Today is Monday, October 15th, and we, I believe, are on a win streak. So, I need to be playing Warlock cards, but I think I'm just winning on even Shaman too much to, to continue, to not continue playing that. Uh, I'm also in a weird position because there's not a ton of news, but I've probably stretched it out enough that this makes a little bit more sense. Uh, so we, we'll probably go three hours. Maybe we'll only go two. Uh, that is always the weird point. Uh, Tragic Masters on the chat. He says, awesome win streak continues. Good luck. Uh, None will survive. Like, if I could get to rank 15, that would be amazing. But as soon as this win streak ends, I, I do need to m probably move over to the European account. Uh, if not, do something else. Let's see, I'm just going to end the turn here. Here we have a game on Steam that looks okay to show off called Hinta Tentacle Bicycle Race. Another very low effort uh, game name at, at the very least. It's an interesting idea uh, of being chased by basically an either a giant octopus or squid while racing down a bicycle. Uh, clearly this is just some assets that have been flipped though. Uh, yeah, there's really nothing here that actually makes it look interesting. And it's not even tagged with like nudity or sexual content, so I don't think there's actually anything here. Uh, 20 achievements, it looks like maybe the, the tr achievement images might be a little pornographic. And that might get them banned. This is a troll game clearly and it will uh, get knocked off of Steam pretty quickly but at the moment it's 11% off for 88 cents. So let's look I'm gonna look at all the Steam achievement pictures. Uh, a slightly weird combination of pictures for the achievement. Probably, maybe one of them will get get the band. Uh, and see, this developer is has also developed World Russian uh, Russian World Cup Battlegrounds uh, and uh, Disco Zombie Rampage Two with DJ Trump. It's just like, these clearly are troll games. Let's see, Uganda, know the way. Yep, troll games all down the list here. So, um, one would think that Valve would implement just a secondary look immediately for the word Hinda and Thai. If you put that in your name, we're going to look at it and delay its release. I think you could probably pretty easily just refuse to have any game with that in your name because it's it's not a, it's not a descriptor that's used by any real developer. It really isn't. It's not something that you would... Uh, that a Japanese developer would use because in, inherently... Uh, what are H games in Japan is a mistranslation in the, in the West as hentai. That's not what H games meant. They, they were arrow games. Uh, e R O as an Eros, the Greek god, and they got mistranslated uh, to the letter H. Uh, so in Japan they do call them H games, but they translate that to mean arrow games. Uh, and and nobody in the West 
would call their no legitimate developer in the West would call their game a hentai game. Alright, well that broke my streak. That's fine. That's what I was kind of hoping for. And now let's try Pain Warlock and play some cards. Moving on, Game of Sutra has an article. Sony is working on a fix for a PlayStation 4 cr crashing messages bug. So, in the same way that uh, you couldn't, uh, for a brief time there, there was a bug in, I believe, Android operating system, and possibly there was a similar bug in the iOS operating system at some point where if somebody sent a malformed message specifically designed to crash uh, your phone it, it could uh, on Android it was particularly bad because it, it kind of would can put your phone into a crash loop uh, where you uh, you you couldn't do anything on your phone uh, of course, it was through the text message system, so it wasn't incredibly hard for all the cell phone carriers to basically just run a antivirus uh, type algorithm through all your text messages and make sure that there weren't any malformed messages. That's generally how it got solved. Playing those cards was a mistake. Uh, but apparently, according to VDG247, uh, wow. let's see, there, there is, if you receive a message with unsupported text characters, your system will freeze up. Hmm. It says many users have reported that the bug is being weaponized by players looking to get ahead in competitive games who send them offending text to shut down the consoles of the opposing players. <laughs> Which that's not very sportsmanlike. Uh, the tricky thing is the players don't even have to open the message for it to lock up their consoles. The crash kicks in as soon as the message hits the PS4's inbox. Some of those on Reddit users have suggested deleting the messages from the mobile PS4 messaging app will do the trick. Others say that once the message is in the console's cache, more drastic measures could be required for fixing it, ranging from booting into safe mode and re to rebuilding the PS4's database or a full factory reset. Uh, while results vary, the so only certain way to dodge a potential system breaking bug is to turn uh, message privacy settings to no one or friends only from either the console or one of the PS4's mobile apps. Okay. So if you play on the PS4, if you have a PS4, I think at least as a temporary solution, it is recommended to change the privacy settings. Uh, it is weird definitely weird that you would have it crash just because it's an unsupported characters it, it really shouldn't do that um, that implies that the font images the rasterizations the vector files are kept in such a locked down small amount of memory that an underflow or overflow is almost guaranteed and that underflow or overflow happens so frequently and so easily that you that there's no like error message popped up or a way to solve that by default, if you were in any, in most other applications to get an unsupported font uh, symbol, you would just see a square. Like, everybody's seen squares and malformed text files, or you've opened like a PDF in a 
notepad. Let's see, give all the demons plus one plus one. Demons. I'm just gonna go ahead and play this. Moving on, Tech Raptor has an article, Gaming Obscure, Goosebumps Escape from Horrorland. I'm not sure that this is really an article worth mentioning, but there's a new My Goosebumps movie creations. coming out. There's a Goosebumps point and click game that came out a few years ago. Uh, I'm actually really surprised because Abby from Giant Bomb East is, is going to play that game. And, and I recently reported that and it will be airing probably in just a couple of days uh, but this this different game Escape from Horrorland uh, I don't know it came out in 1996 hmm. let's see miniatures are often mixed with CGI for effect this game looks definitely older but it also looks more realistic than the one I played that was, I think, just called the Goosebumps game. Uh, that was a predecessor to the first Goosebumps movie, but only lightly. Hmm. Let's see. The final paragraph of this article says, Overall, Escape from Horrorland is usual, unusually dated. The core gameplay is fine. It's not buggy. It's not bad, but it's a relic. It's a nostalgic trip into style, culture, and technology of the 1990s. Windows 95 games are difficult to play now, but if you watch a Let's Play or find an emulator, it can be the perfect way to immerse yourself in another era, if only for an hour. And see, that just seems like that is a weird uh, situation uh, to, to be in, to play such an old game that other people really can't play. Like, I don't understand if there really is some relevancy here. Uh, like, I, I really don't don't get the idea of playing the old game uh, when nobody else, like, nobody else can really play it. Um, or very small. Tragic Master is saying good game. Tragic Master is definitely keeping the chat going and being very very helpful at the very least he's he's keeping nightbot going where because nightbot won't uh post anything unless there's at least two messages that aren't posted by nightbot uh in between and the i have nightbot set to try and keep the chat going as much as possible and it really does help. It, it really shows, uh, tells YouTube to start promoting the live stream while it's still going on a lot more. I recently listened to, I'd say, most, if not all, of the Good Mythical Morning uh, de make developers, producers, not producers, the hosts, uh, talking about YouTube burnout. And yeah. A lot of people talking about YouTube burnout. I, I don't think I'm still. Turned our curse uh, into our strength. I'm probably being stupid by saying this, but I don't think I'm quite to the point where I'm burned out of that. Uh, particularly when I look at my life and realize that there's definitely some other jobs I've worked at that I am still burned out on uh, years and years later. But I, I was certainly approaching a level of burnout. Um, by overworking myself and and the decision to take it a little bit slower and make a little less content for at least November and December and I'm probably going to try and push that into 2019 completely is something I want to have happen I'll, to avoid burnout and, and just make a little less content um, now unfortunately I haven't ma found the magic key to make my content any better or more appealing to people and I, I definitely haven't uh, hit any trigger to make YouTube want to promote my channel more so but I am not really gonna try and worry about things I can't control 
Moving on, we have a game on Steam called Zombie School, which looks like it's a manga game, but it is violent gore, free to play, in VR. So, it's an interesting idea to be in VR in a manga. It's world breaking, certainly. It doesn't really seem like this game is translated or at least the screenshots don't seem like they're translated doesn't seem like there's going to be any audio um, and of course trying to watch any of these videos is a problem there was another game that was a manga in VR I and maybe this is that game let's see this is not English supported so that's a problem, only simplified Chinese, not Japanese supported either. It's free though, so I guess the price is right. Um, to be fair, I often complain about the animation quality of Chinese games, and this looks like a Chinese game definitely. Uh, this so far looks pretty good though. That's not terrible. Uh, inherently there's a much lower quality uh, requirement and this developer hasn't made anything else uh, like, you're not really expected to to do that much as far as as much effort in in a manga because you just have to draw it in black and white you just have to be on top as far as either being good at inking or having a good inker and being good at line drawing. Uh, you don't have to deal with coloring. Uh, you, lettering outside think. of English is hard to judge. So, uh, but one would, would assume that when you're talking Chinese letter uh, characters, there's a, a, a level of quality that you would have to make sure uh, you, you reach anyways. Let's I'll just go ahead and kill that kind of character. It's a shame that game wasn't in English, though. Uh, because the idea of a VR manga world is slightly interesting. And then a VR in a zombie world that is not just killing the zombies is an Let interesting idea think. too if telltale games had not gone out of business i could see playing the walking dead like a new series of walking dead in vr where you're you're turning your head and you're looking at a character like clementine and you're making conversation decisions uh, in vr it would just be all about the immersion then and and not so much about the action which Let's face it, the Telltale games have never been good about showing Your magic uh, shall not showing you. action. Fascinating. Crystallize. That net. Hmm. Let's see. Next game we have on Steam is called Cloud Chasers Journey of Hope. Which looks like it is an indie adventure game. Could be an asset flip game too. Let's see. Uh, I they're selling it on this father's attempt to survival but then it looks like it's it's more of a resource management top-down story game like you're going from place to place you're searching buildings you're giving some food and water to your daughter or yourself you're collecting items this inherently doesn't mean it's a bad game it's just this is definitely not what most people play let's see how much is this 
Let's see, 45 Steam achievements, 20% off at $3.99. That might be a decent price, I or at least wonder. good enough for it to justify going on the wish list. We're looking at the developer's other games. He's got all positive reviews. I think that puts it on the wish list, even though most of these first strike games and these flying mm. games are not something I would really want to play. Let's see. Barely got that done in time. Taking too much time talking about games. Next game we have on Steam is called Twin Synth. It looks like it is a low resolution asteroids clone. Uh, don't be fooled by the curved filter here because that can easily be done. Uh, or the background too, that could be animated pretty easily. Great music while doing massive combos. Unfortunately, this really is just an Asteroids Clan for Hell game. And that's the part that loses me. Adding music or not, doesn't get away from the core gameplay mechanic that I don't like. Uh, this is an early access game. It's 10% off for $17.99. As a ridiculously expensive game for what it looks like. The, the only other game they've made is positive, but it's a VR game. It's the Mind mm -hmm. Over Matter Telekinetic Training, where you wave your hands and make things fly. Very different game than what we were just looking at. Oh, Lord. Okay, so we have the upcoming balance update for Hearthstone, October 2018. Giggling Inventor will cost 7 mana up from 5. This may have been what Tragic Master was talking about earlier, so uh, Giggling Inventor <laughs> was a card that I was kind of loving. Uh, and this probably means, now that there's been a balance update, I probably should redo all my decks. Um, even if there aren't any other changes. Uh, Giggling Inventor was a 5 mana, 2-1 uh, attack minion that had the battle card to summon 2-1-2 two, two mechs with Taunted Divine Shield. Now it's a 7 mana, 2-1 minion with the same battle cry. So it's more expensive and less likely to be used. Probably was overpowered, moving two mana spaces. Uh, even in that instance, though, it, it doesn't, has doesn't seem like that's the, really the wrong move. <laughs> right now, all I'm trying to do is play Warlock cards, but I would like to win if I can. The next thing, this is going to suck. Uh, for a lot of people, but this may finally... I, I don't know if this really changes the meta on the mage deck. Mana Worm will cost two mana up from one. So, it used to be a one mana, one attack, three health uh, minion. Whenever you cast a spell, it gains plus one attack. Now it is a two mana, one attack, three health minion. Whenever you cast a spell, it get plus one attack. Yeah, that... That definitely nerfs the early game for a lot of uh, mage players, whereas I still don't think that really changes the main problems with the mage, though. Uh, and then the next nerf is Aviana will cost 10 minion up from 9, so it used to be a 9 mana 5 attack 5 health legendary minion. Why am I not showing these? Uh, I'll show them in a second. Uh, it was a legendary minion that says your minions cost 1 mana. Now it's a 10 mana, 5 attack, 5 health legendary minion. But that says your minions cost 1 mana. Um, yep, I just lost. That was dumb. It was real, real dumb. I'm, 
I'm losing my win streak. Hmm. Where are we here on the progress to? Uh, there, there really isn't any reason to to continue down this. Let's go over to the European account uh, and switch out. I should have done that earlier. We'll save the rest of that daily quest for Wednesday. Hmm. Meanwhile, while that is loading, let's see. We will just show the changes over here. It won't look exactly great. Five mana to seven mana on the Giggling Inventor. One mana to two mana. That seems like this one in particular is a strange nerf. And then nine mana to ten mana. I totally get that. But also, I don't think this really changes many people playing this card. I think they'll still play this card. Whereas the I think newer players were playing this card and they're gonna stop playing this card for nothing else. And I imagine most players, newer or older, will probably stop playing this card as much. Alright. So now we're on the European account. Let's re-roll this. We have five games in any mode. Three games with the Druid or Rogue. Start with. So let's see. Token Druid or Death Rattle Rogue? Let's try Death Rattle Rogue. Hmm. Next, we have a game on Steam called Attack of the Mutants, which is a low effort asset flip. Uh, although the graphics do look kind of nice there then this is inherently the the problem with asset flips now is that that Valera even the assets strong. that are on the store look good For Doomhammer. but you can kind of tell when you have no ui when it's just a game that's a first person shooter when you're not seeing any enemies uh there, there's still something that clearly tells you that that it's not worth it 25% off for $2.99 is a big indicator too and we can see that this developer has developed several games in the month of October so this is probably a troll developer who's already been kicked off of Steam one way and now they are uh, coming back under a different name It's, that would be my guess of what it is if I was just to speculate. Next we have a game on Steam called Atomic Society. It's a strategy simulation, early access, but also a little bit of an asset flip game too. And see this feels like this is half of a game idea and half a game but it's it's missing polish certainly and a lot of these strategy simulation games are too complicated for their own good that they don't look entertaining they look like they are homework of reading let's see this is early access $14.99 with no discount and if we look at the developer they've not made anything else at all Next game we have on Steam is called Dinosaur Safari VR, which is a attempt at a low effort VR game to attract children to buy the game. Inherently it doesn't look terrible. The VR as uh, the 3D assets of dinosaurs. There are enough out there on the Unity store clearly to buy. Uh, I just don't think you really have a game there. 
until you do something more with the VR. Uh, to be fair though, the price is free. And it doesn't seem like there's any DLC. It's early access. So, if you have a kid and you have VR and you like dinosaurs, or they like dinosaurs, uh, Dinosaur Safari VR is very possibly worth your time. It, it's, it's really just going to come down to uh, spending your time on it. So, so there's a lot of lack of polish that a free game can can cover up. And sure, I imagine the kids. Uh, of course, then you you have to ask the question: Does it really make sense to let a young child who would still be in the dinosaurs? Let's let's uh, say that child is below the age of ten. Does it make sense to let them use your VR headset and potentially break a six hundred dollar device? Uh, because I would say that there's a good argument. No, you should never let young kids play with a VR headset. And let's say you have like a special needs. Uh, is that a phrase that's used anymore? Uh, ch child uh, that is like autistic and uh, and he's into dinosaurs. At that point, does it make? sense to to let them play with VR either and I think the answer still is probably no because if your child has special needs and autistic there there's still a high chance that they will break your $600 device so I'm not 100% sure that there's really a market there uh, I could imagine if VR got really really cheap you would start seeing VR presentations in kids' museums, but then you'd also probably have to have somebody constantly cleaning out the VRs to make sure you're not Arcus. spreading pink eye to every person that uses it. And so there's just a lot of expense and danger in, in making VR games for kids. And not a lot of good reason to even make it for uh, Job's done. for adults moving on we have a game called the operational art of war 4 so I I better see three other versions of this game by this developer um, this looks like more of a Windows 95 strategy game a little bit older in its graphics but by the graphics being simplistic, you can see that they are placing a lot more on the screen in the hex grade. And this almost feels like it's just a complicated version of that game Risk. Uh, probably is something like that. It's, looks like it's a true placement strategy game, which is not something that is a common style of game. Cries third party account for multiplayer and it's $39.99 this is not a game for me certainly it looks way too complicated but it might be a game for people who know what they're getting into this is from the developer who let's switch back over here for a second hmm. um, not quite there it will be death out of a random friendly minion. I'm gonna go ahead and hit this one. This is from a developer who made Aggressor's Ancient Rome, which is rated mostly positive. Warhammer 40k Gladius, which is mostly positive. Wars of Succession, which has no reviews. Strategic Commander Classic, which has no reviews. Mm. I made several games. In fact, they have 71 pages of results. So this developer seems like they're a middle, middleware company. Uh, they made Battlestar Galactica Deadlock, which is mostly positive. Uh, it seems like they get hired out to make mostly war simulation style games, or that's all they make uh, as I'm scrolling through this. 
but everything I've seen is also mostly positive so yeah if you are into war games operational art of war 4 seems like it might be a game worth playing but you have to be that specific niche style player all right let's try token druid GameIndustry.biz has an article, Sega Sammy, the parent company of Sega, cuts, quote, long overtime by 80 to 90 percent. Japanese Algeria firm updates progress Anduin. on the road to 2020 will the continue to focus on games. I must uh, the Sega Sammy has reduced the number of employees working long overtime by between 80 and 90 percent since 2014, according to the 20. 18 integrated report now what is long over overtime in japan compared to the rest of the world could be really long it could be 120 hours a week uh, but at least we know that they're somewhat moving in the right direction uh, following the introduction of new measures aimed at developing a healthier work-life balance employees at sega games sega entertainment and other sega Sammy subsidiaries are working less overtime this also might be an effort to just not have to pay overtime in the countries that require you to pay overtime uh, i imagine a lot of people that work for sega Sammy are salaried so they don't have what to pay overtime anyways while it's a marked improvement, long overtime is recognized as more than 80 hours per month, meaning employees can still work around four extra hours a day without being recorded in these fig figures. Uh, 80 hours per month. What hmm. Well, in the United States, if you're working eight hours a day and you're working five days a week, that would be 40 hours for one week. There's four weeks in the United States. Uh, I guess the United the States is probably the worst one to the compare yourself to, though, because clearly the U.S. is is way too fond of overworking it themselves to death. Uh, but yeah in the u.s 40 hours a week times four weeks you're, you're talking 160 hours uh double that let's see however uh the next paragraph goes uh, continues however sega sammy is committed to improving the situation by implementing occupational training attendance management individual alerts for employees consultations with superiors, establishment of no overtime and no meeting days, adjustments of work volumes, streamlining meetings, and revisiting operational flow. Uh, inherently in Japan too, this absolutely has to happen because one of the major reasons why the Japanese society is rapidly aging is because nobody has the time uh, they, a lot of salary men have the money, uh, although a lot of them don't have the money either, but nobody has the time to go on dates and find somebody to marry them and, uh, and have children and raise children. Let's see, skip a paragraph. The government incentive is backed by a need to ease congestion in urban centers ahead of the 2020 Olympics. So. Maybe after the 2020 Olympics end, uh, the the overtime comes back. It also serves the, to benefit the work-life balance of Japanese workers. Let's see. Is there anything else? Is there anything else in this GameIndustry.biz article? The firm plans to launch multiple new titles in 2019. Now, Sega has a lot of licenses, and a lot of them don't particularly go to outside of Japan, so this is not super surprising that they would say that 
In 2019, they plan to launch multiple new titles, uh, 12 new digital games, so 12 probably cell phone or eShop games, uh, targeting a 24% increase in net sales and 8% discreet, uh, discreet in operating, uh, operating income compared to the previous year. Maybe what they mean by digital games, though, is is just any kind of video game so not all of those are going to be mobile games but i imagine some of them are uh sega sammy also revealed the lifetime sales and free downloads of a number of intellectual properties sonic the hedgehog is by far the publisher's most profitable prolific franchise and that reflected by the 800 million downloads and units sold in its near 30 year lifespan. For the wilds. Let's see. Moving on. Rest Let's see, I don't know if I even really need to talk about this but there's a opening trailer movie for a game called Ishigami no Kuzana you know what just show the name Ishigami no Kazuna opening movie it is the 2019 do Hope X Ford works smart for him game. Um, so, yeah. And like so many Japanese trailers, Greetings. there's very little being shown when you just skip around. You just see some of the characters. If it's a smartphone game, it really doesn't fall into my interest range. 36. I'm about to die in a one hit turn knockout as soon as he figures out how to turn that health into an attack we have a game on steam called swing the cat which looks like it's a vr game where you're throwing cats so that's that's a troll game clearly it's an asset flip troll game of animal cruelty and it's not even trying to make it comedic or cartoony, uh, really. Yeah, this one will probably get knocked off Steam. 10% off for 89 cents. I don't know why anybody would want that. Let's see. And clearly, we have on this company's a troll image, too as a descriptor okay so if we're gonna think for a second how can you make a game where it would be okay to swing or throw a cat uh, there's a couple different ways to do this uh, as a thought I just want to take a break and do the mental exercise here because I, I am for the most part com uh, anti-censorship and don't want to just say some form of expression can never be done uh, certainly the Simpsons had the cat lady on their show uh, that throws cats and I do believe she may show up in at wild. least the Simpsons arcade game uh, as an enemy uh, so it has been done before uh, but that's usually that's an instance of a character you're supposed to despise and attack throwing the cat not a character that you're playing as I could see incidental issues of throwing a cat uh, particularly if a cat clutched onto your face or bit you or some way uh, a quick knee-jerk response I really didn't think of it 
You could probably put that in any game and you'd be okay with it. Although, in all honesty, there's a decent chance that it would just get taken out again just for fear of offending, like, PETA. Uh, although, I'm, more and more, I'm not sure anybody cares if they offend PETA because they're offended all the time anyways. Uh, but, if you were going to have it happen, in the game, you would either need to be attacked by cats fairly often, uh, or at least before you threw them. It probably shouldn't be your main gameplay mechanic, but I could see it being a funny incident that happens in the middle of a game. Uh, uh, particularly if you're playing a mature game that, that is hardcore into that. Like, if Borderlands 3 as a reference came out and there was a section where a cat attacks you and you you're, you're given just in the middle of that scene this mini game where you can choose the trajectory and, and the power and throw it uh, that would be okay but if that was a consistent thing it would probably be less of an issue um, now the bigger question is why would you want to make a game minigame section where you're throwing a cat. Um, and I could see Bulletstorm doing something like that. I could see Duke Nukem doing something like that. But even they, they would probably have enough sense to not make it your main focus as the game. And that probably explains well enough why we have not in all of our time seen a lot of scenarios like that. And, to be fair, in the real world, you don't very often run into scenarios where people do throw animals and not get arrested. Moving down to casual play, because I'm just going to try and get some victories. Uh, let's see. Moving forward, we have a game on Steam called Magical Monster Land. This looks like a scaled-up NES style of animation. Uh, it's Bro, not sticking to an 8-bit pixel or even like a 16-bit pixely art style. It's, it's invoking that art style while still looking a lot more modern. It looks like it's an early access platformer uh, doing something with super, similar to Super Mario Bros. 3. Looks like there's three collectibles, coins, and stars, and lives questionable about having lives in a modern game but I'd be cool with that Donkey Kong Country influence of minecart racing uh, Mario Brothers influence here so clearly they have experienced this is Super Mario Brothers 2 style door uh, clearly they, there's this is Super Mario Brothers style fish that they're learning from some of the the best some of the classics and that's a good point to start certainly to sell your game let's see this game is early access and it's a well dollar ninety nine and unless this developer has I developed something else like. that is questionable which they haven't that was a mistake um, I'm gonna go and squelch this guy immediately because it's the obvious. This is the first game from this developer. Um, yeah, this one is gonna go on my wish list. Uh, this game also has armor that you pick up, uh, like ghosts and goblins or ghouls and goblins. And you're jumping on things, and you're moving fast, I'm watching the. the the video of it. I'm still iffy about showing video on my stream. So far I haven't gotten any content IDs on the streams for showing videos, but to be honest it hasn't worked uh, very often either. We must cleanse the sun well. Just the general idea of mixing some of the things that were added to Donkey Kong Country with some of the things that were in Gust and Goblins and uh, Super Mario Brothers games already shows that they they knew where to steal and they knew where to
to at least somewhat add new content. Hmm. Uh, or mix and match content. Job done. Hmm. Yep. Uh, Magical Monster Land goes on the wish list. It, this is actually a very happy to see game. Uh, I'm very happy to see a game like this come out on Steam because we I've been looking for a while for a more retro Super Mario Bros. game that actually has a chance of playing well. You get a lot of things that claim to be retro. Um, the closest game I've found so far was Kill the Plumber uh, which I think I own and I'll probably play but even in that it they, they all seem to play a little badly and they, they all seem to be low effort games uh, there there hasn't been a great Super Mario Brothers clone on PC uh, or on Steam that I found uh, uh, you have things like a hat in time that that sort of is a Super Mario 64 uh, clone. Let's see. Shall we make a storm? And this. Next game we have on Steam is called Desolate Sands. It's a VR action adventure indie simulation, according to the tags. Didn't seem like it. Explore an ancient Egyptian tomb, climb and solve the puzzles to discover the mysteries within. When I saw this screenshot, I thought this was going to be some kind of space game or puzzle game. Hmm. Let's see, when I saw a simulation, I thought it was going to be a flying around game. Hmm. Kind of have a inconsistency on the animation style here versus the animation style here. This looks a lot worse. This looks different too. It's concerning, certainly. Uh, I bet this isn't much of a game, being a VR game, for $9.99. It's probably in line with a decent VR game though that all VR games are overpriced. This is from a developer who has made several games and none of them have been reviewed. Uh, fortunately I can still skip VR games because I'm not likely to ever have a VR head uh, headset. Oh, not at this rate. Like, I, I think I'm gonna Conveniently ignore them forever. Yeah, ignore VR. Hmm. Gamatsu has an article. Uh, Corpse Party, Book of Shadows, and Blood Drive are coming to PC. So is Sweet Sacho's hysterical, hysteric birthday bash coming to the West for PC? So. These are, I believe, Xseed Publisher published um, visual novel horror games, if I'm guessing right. Uh, Corpse Party Book of Shadows was originally released for the PSP on September 21st. It's the follow-up from the original cult hit horror title, Corpse Party. Shall we make a storm? Don't judge. Let's see, Corpse Party Dr Blood Drive was a Vita game that came out in July 2014 in Japan. A Corpse Party Sweet Sacho's Hysterical Birthday Bash came out for the PSP August 2012 the uh, in Japan. And then Corpse Party 2 Dead Patient was originally released on PC in Japan on May 2013. So this entire series, it seems like, is coming back out, uh, coming to the West, getting localized. More and more we're seeing that happen. Uh, although, there is a still small bit of hesitation for Japanese games uh, 
coming to Steam, particularly the the adult Japanese games, because uh, yeah, stormy, stormy. a lot of companies are still happy with the idea of putting a censored version on Steam and then having an uncensored patch available on their website, which then takes control away from Steam to properly label the games. Um, and so then the Steam still runs into the problem where somebody has run an uncensored patch on a game and is streaming that game with the uncensored patch and then saying, yo man, I got this on Steam, uh, when technically they kind of didn't. Alright, let's... We can do this. We can do this. And we can do that. Job's done. Hmm. There are no Steam links so far for this series, but I guess there's nothing really stopping me from showing what this looks like. You can see it's all it's all horror, but not too much horror. Uh, well, at least on the screenshots uh, or the cover images that they're showing. Corpse Party might be one of those games where uh, or game series that becomes a staple of Halloween month. Well, I'm not getting any victories very fast. Let's, let's play Mage. But also, I'm not paying a lot of attention. I may have to go into a silent post show because I'm going to get maybe get the news done. Here's a weird one. We've got a game on Steam called Shoemaker, which looks like it is a low effort asset flip of a game to be a shoe cobbler shoe repairer like I don't know whoever aspired in life to be a shoe cobbler though uh, it's not even really how it works in the west people don't fix yeah, shoes it's cheaper just to throw them away and buy new ones for the most part you asked for it let's see this feels a lot reminiscent of the computer repair simulator games I've seen before. This developer has come out with several other games that look like they are troll games and the vast majority of them are not rated positively. They're mixed. That's what this line means or they're negative. That's what the thumb down means. So yeah. That's easily a game to skip. Game of Sutra has an article, Weekly Jobs Roundup. Uh, they have Senior Game Developer for Outfit 7 in Barcelona, Spain. Senior Designer for Shell Games, S-C-H-E-L-L -L, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, and... Technical artist for Cryptic Studios in Los Gatos, California, and the lead UI VR developer for Plastic Wax in Sydney, New South Wales, Australia. So we can get through that job listing pretty quickly. Next, we have a game on Steam called Escape Legacy Ancient Scrolls. This one might be a moderately okay 3d escape room game but i'm not 100 percent sure with this dot in the middle of the screen it makes me wonder if this is vr only um, the thing you're seeing here that makes this look slightly better than your average asset flip horror game or escape the room game is is this placement of objects and this looks like a lived-in world um, seems like there's a character that you get to see for at least a brief second that you're probably playing as. Yes. Running out of time, so have to Unravel. play. Hmm. 
to be fair, some of these screenshots of this girl seems like she's she's a little underdressed and out of proportion for uh, for a character. But you know what? I'm not gonna complain too much. Uh, a uh, that doesn't look completely unrealistic as far as an artistic style or as, a, as far as a person escape legacy is 20% off for $7.19 it doesn't use VR surprisingly um, so unless this developer has made some other games that are really bad no this one deserves to be on the wish list at least until we see some reviews on it or until a considerable do. amount of time has do. happened to indicate Unravel. that it will never get reviews. Uh, I am going to have to probably have a come to Jesus moment at some point and realize that if games don't get reviews in the first couple of Access weeks, denied. it probably will never get any reviews. But I'd also like to see that change. I'd like to see YouTubers like me uh, figure out ways to have that not be the case. Uh, uh, let's see. I guess I, I'd like to see games get reviews, older games get reviews, and have new people trying older games uh, and building some more of their mouth around games. Uh, moving on, we have an article, Rockstar. Uh, GameIndustry.biz has this article. Rockstar has been working, quote, Rockstar has been, quote, working 100-hour weeks on Red Dead Redemption 2. Studio co-founder Dan Hauser details the effort to put in into the upcoming Wild West epic. Now, that is a dangerous phrase to say because the last person who said we will work 100-hour weeks got yelled at by basically virtue signal ning people who said uh, overworking your employees is not a joke and and um, and they shouldn't be working 100 hour weeks and there was a lot of complaints there uh, let's see and and in all honesty uh, look at the comparison Japan doesn't want people working over 80 hours a month four weeks whereas rockstar games which i believe is at least in part out of the united states but i think they have uh, some offices everywhere this is rockstar san diego actually so that is in the united states are celebrating the idea of working um, hmm. are, are celebrating overworking employees or employees overworking themselves which is not a good way to go let's see there's a paragraph here that says the result is a game that Dan claims is 65 hours long although five hours of the content has have actually been cut and over 300,000 animations and 500,000 lines of dialogue yeah, from by 700 voice actors and even more lines of code for all of those big numbers, I, I kind of question what game is actually what in is Red Dead Redemption because we really haven't seen that. Like I've heard people shown uh, like two-hour video uh, videos of Red Dead Redemption too, and the first hour was just people wandering around the the barren desert, and that was kind of it. And for as much effort as you put into things, it is still very possible that you're uh, going to find yourself in a position where the game feels empty. Uh, or it feels like it's just full of busy work that people don't really want to do. I would argue that maybe that is slightly the problem with uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I watched a video covering the entire story of w what has happened in the Assassin's Creed timeline and there definitely is stuff there that I 
don't know because I, um, I've not been playing some of the games. Okay. We gotta do this. We gotta do this. I gotta do this. I gotta do this. And I've gotta hope that that saves me, but I don't think it does. We have a GameIndustry.biz article, Sony has delayed the PS4 release of Sinran Kagura over the sexually explicit content. Platformer holder requests the removal of the intimacy mode which features sexual interactions with underage girls. As I understand it, this is a slight misunderstanding or purposeful yellow journalism. I think directly from your gamer um, as how they're phrasing it but I guess we can blame this one actually directly um, we can I guess just directly blame Sony and GameIndustry.biz on this one since they're not quoting your gamer um, Rated Peggy 16 in Europe, Sinran Kagura Burst Renewal is an anime style game with a high school grown ninjas that feature partial nudity, sexual themes, strong language, and violence. In the current form, the game also includes an intimacy mode which allows players to spray down and grope their girls. Uh, okay. I mean, we, we could dance, dance around it. Uh, it really is all just going to boil down to. Uh, fantasy and thought police uh, your perspective on that hmm. I thought for maybe a second the intimacy mode was and it, it may very well just be more of a massage mode or a skinship mode which are concepts that are completely misunderstood uh, in outside of Japan but I mean, it could very much just be groping, too. Uh, the Steam release, fortunately, which will launch alongside the PS4 version, will remain unaltered. So if you want to see that part of the game, uh, I think that's uh, the way to go. Let's see. The intimacy mode has appeared in previous games from Xseed without pushback from Sony, however, according to the Xseed localization producer Torn Lipschultz. This is a brand new policy from a platform holder. He added that that while the age of the characters doesn't help, he believes it's the interactivity in general that's the issue. And see, this new intimacy slash groping modes in games was actually added by the core engine that a lot of these games are developed by. Um, called I believe live 2d euphoria is I believe the name of the engine and so that engine added the feature and that's why so many games have this feature now uh, but live 2d also makes a lot of flat 2d sprites look 3d or at least have some motion and action to it and it's really nice software hmm. <coughs> P-Cube, by the way, is the UK distributor of this game, and they ran into similar problems with Omega Labyrinth Z uh, to be the first game banned in the UK since Manhunt 2, and uh, this also follows the controversial game, the pickup artist, uh, the, well, the pickup artist game called Super Seducer being... Uh, blocked for from release on the PlayStation 4 uh, it's a weird way for Sony to go certainly because there is this issue certainly where Sony used to be the more liberal game publisher where you could do anything whereas Nintendo was the very locked down conservative 
publisher where you had to get everything approved and Microsoft was kind of not a non-contender and now it has changed around to now Microsoft is desperate and willing for any to allow any Japanese uh, publisher to publish just about anything and Sony is getting way more conservative and Nintendo is staying very conservative uh, as far as what they're allowing. Anyways, that's going to be an hour, so as always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want to friend or follow me on any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below in the description box. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.